What is a successful season? What's an unsuccessful season? You know, going into the playoffs, go deep into the playoffs is a successful season. Everything else doesn't matter. Um, you know, we do have a great coach. We got a great players. You mentioned Maxi Kleba, the most underrated defensive player in the NBA. People don't realize what a great defender he is. His three point shot keeps him improving. Just tell him he'll, he'll say, call me. You know, he, he wants you to know that he can play um, Dodo, Dorian, Finney Smith. You know, we do this thing. We track internal um, analytics, things during practice and everything. Dodo, his his shots selection, selection, his ability to make threes just keeps on improving every single year. So we expect him to get even better. You know, we've got all the tools. We've got a great coach. We've got Luca who makes everybody better. KP, I'm completely confident he'll stay healthy. Um, there's the sky's the limit for this team. I, I can't understate, you know, I can't overstate rather how excited I am for these guys. Mark Cuban, let me take it off the court for a little bit because you're more qualified than most to answer this question. I know that you're incredibly excited about your team. You're incredibly excited about this season. And obviously, you were actively involved with a lot of stuff that was going on in the offseason, you know, last season, not just with COVID, but with social yeah. justice issues. And I applaud you for all of that. My question to you would be this. As successful as the NBA was in the bubble with no positive tests, just recently, we had a game postponed, obviously, in Houston with Harden and those boys because of COVID, potential positive tests and things of that nature. I want to know how concerned are you about this season now that there is no bubble, everybody's going to be in their respective city, you're still going to be traveling to games and things of that nature. Are you concerned at all about this season going forward uninterrupted? Yes, of course. We've already lost a game. You know, this is a maturity test for all 450 players in the NBA. Um, or and plus the two-way players, you know, this is the chance for, for guys really to make mistakes um, outside the bubble. And it's going to happen. We've already seen it happen. You know, one of the reasons I'm traveling with our team on Christmas Day is to show them, you know, that this is important to me, that we need to all be very vigilant. We can't be going out because we're in L.A. or we're Dallas or wherever. You know, we've got to make sure we're getting tested. We're filling out the questionnaire every morning. We're watching out for each other. And that doesn't mean, you know, keeping an eye on each other, but supporting each other. You know, I have this saying that I've had for 20 years. You can have one knucklehead on the team, but you can't have two because the two knuckleheads hang out together and cause problems for everybody else. Mm. This year, that's amplified even more. You can't even have one knucklehead because if that one knucklehead goes out and doesn't report or doesn't do what they're supposed to, that can infect an entire team and take down, you know, a good part of your season. Because if, if you get sick, if somebody gets sick, who knows what the consequences are, not just administratively with the NBA, but health-wise, which is far more important. So being vigilant about that, making the guys understand how important this is and what's at stake, that's one of the reasons I'm here on Christmas Day, to show my support, to be there with them, to be at the team meals, you know, to let them see me. To be sitting alone even at the games to show them that, you know, this is not typical. There, there's going to be mistakes. We've already seen them. And, and part of my job is to reduce some of the mistakes here at the Mavs and hopefully set an example for the entire NBA that it can be done. Well, you're certainly setting the tone. I kind of want to stay with that subject because one of the dominant storylines of late has been James Harden and his tenuous relationship with the Rockets. Mark, if you were in charge of that team, how would you handle the situation moving forward? You know, I don't want to speak for another owner or another organization. You know, we've had issues in our team, and every team goes through something. And players have to make their own decisions about what's best for them. Um, I just tried to keep my relationships with our players as strong as possible so that in the event they want change, we can handle it privately and, and deal with it privately. I mean, I've certainly had players request and even demand trades over the past 20 years, and we've just dealt with it. Um, we've tried not to make it public. And there's, you know, I, again, I don't want to speak for another owner or player or organization. It, it's never an easy set of circumstances. Mark, don't you feel that you owe the people of New York an apology? After all, they knew it was an incredibly <laughs> bad idea to trade Chris Stapp's Porzingis, and you took advantage of a completely inept franchise. How dare you? Don't you owe the people of New York an apology, the many Knicks fans who you robbed of Chris Stapp's Porzingis? Merry Christmas, Max. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's yeah, a for Dallas day. fans. It's, it's a beautiful day for basketball. We're going to have all these games. 
Tune in on ESPN. I mean, what's better on Christmas Day? Open your presents and spend a whole day watching basketball. That, that's my thank you to New York, Dallas, L.A., Miami, Chicago, all NBA cities. Mark, as crazy as this question may sound, I'm going to ask it. As crazy as this question may sound, Mark, I'm going to ask it anyway, because I know that obviously with the Greek freak electing to stay in Milwaukee, you got a guy that committed to stay into a, 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 you know, a smaller market. We see how, you know, the, the league pays attention, all that stuff. The league definitely endorses such a thing. But it just seems to be something extra special when you got a Los Angeles Lakers squad as an NBA champion right now. It seems to be a great, great thing for the NBA. Could you talk about where you think the NBA is now because a team like the Lakers are in the eye of the storm and everybody's shooting for them because they stand as the champions today. This is your that opponent. That means tonight. nothing. Nothing, Stephen. Nothing. You know, nothing. When we were the champ, when they he were the champs, you know, it doesn't matter who the champ is. They're always going to be gunned for it. This whole concept of the big cities on the coast have to be good for everybody to, to get excited about the NBA. Not in this world anymore. That You know, you and I are getting old, Steve, and that was 20 years ago. Um, right now with yeah. social media and, the, you know, we care about Luca, you know, and, and that's what's happening more. The players are becoming more of, of – um, more key to awareness and interest from younger kids, Gen Z, than even the teams are. So we've got to pay special attention to more about, you know, how strong is LeBron's social media game, which is very strong. How you, how much, how strong is Lucas' social media game, which is even stronger than LeBron's. Okay, I said it. You know, how strong is Giannis's social media <laughs> game? These are the things that matter these days in terms of interest. In those days of building the coast up and you've got to have interest from the coast. You know, because Since you and Mac were sure. in the Christmas, Max were in the Christmas spirit. You know, you got on the nice Santa hat. Max has on that beautiful sweater and stuff like that. You know, making the people smile. I didn't have anything like that, so I thought. And then I realized mm -hmm. I got something that I know would make me smile. <laughs> oh my God! This works for me. This works for me. You understand? Wow. You know why, Max? That was a you know stretch. Why, Max? You because, just needed a prop. Because every time, hey, listen, hey, listen. Every you time I put out. on this hat, wrong holiday. Every time, yeah. every time I put on this hat, it reminds me of the holiday season that's relevant to all of us, but not necessarily to those Dallas Cowboy fans out there. So that makes me feel good, and in the Christmas spirit, more so than anything right now. And that's what okay, I wanted Grinch. to say. Now let me we, stay. Next year let we'll get you a Grinch in costume. Let me lump the coal in all their let, stockings. Let, let me, let, that's right. That's right. Let me stay in that state of Texas right now and tell you when it comes to a player more valuable to their team, even though LeBron is the greatest in the world, even though he's that champion, the fact of the matter is it's Luka Doncic. Why do I say that, Max Kellerman? It ain't just because of his game. It's because he's in Dallas as opposed to L.A. He don't have Anthony Davis. He ain't in the second largest, uh, the second largest state in the United States of America, second largest market. I'm sorry. He ain't wearing the purple and gold. He doesn't have 17 championships as a backdrop. Okay, he don't have all of that. He's playing for the Dallas Mavericks. And who are the Dallas Mavericks without Luka Doncic? You got an injured Porzingis. You got Dorian Finney-Smith. You got Tim Hardaway. Okay, you got Josh Richardson there now. No disrespect to them because we know that they can play and they're going to be in the playoffs very fast. Formidable guys, good dudes. And I love me that Tim Hardaway Jr. because I love his daddy. But let me tell you something right now. The bottom line is, without Luka, we ain't paying attention to anything about the Dallas Mavericks but Mark Cuban. And he's on Shark Tank. So the bottom line is, Luca is more valuable because he's the one that single-handedly has this entire franchise relevant. That's why we got to go with Luca in this particular situation with this particular question. Well, a lot of times we say who's more valuable to their team, and we all know one guy is better, and that's LeBron. What we're really asking is who's on the lesser team. But I, I think it's more than that. 
when you'd say who's more valuable to their team, Luca or LeBron, I think LeBron is more valuable to his team. And I'll tell you why, Stephen A. You're right that if you take Luca away from the Mavs, like he gets them closer to a title, right? Or, or, or to the playoffs or to winning a playoff series by himself, maybe, you could argue, because there's less around him. Although when Porzingis gets back, that'll change too. But I, I think there's something bigger than that. The question is, who gets you to the championship, to the promised land? If you put Luka on the Lakers and took LeBron off, I, I don't know that we'd all be saying, yes, the Lakers are definitely going to win the championship. But if you put LeBron on the Mavs and gave him Porzingis, maybe they would be title favorites. You know, this comes down to the LeBron. It happens in the LeBron-Jordan debate, too. I think LeBron by himself gets a team closer to a title than Jordan by himself. But if you give Jordan something and you give LeBron something, yeah, right. But if you give them both stuff, Jordan will take you there every single time, right? That's who LeBron is in this NBA. He's the Jordan of this NBA. Whenever LeBron has a reasonable chance to win the title, he either does or gets very close. You know, like, he goes, he goes six games with Della Vadova as his second-best player. He beats the 73-win Warriors team. If you add KD to the Warriors, nothing he can do or anyone can do. But LeBron gives you that premium over everyone else, including the Lakers, that Luka just, just doesn't give you. LeBron goes to the Mavs, you think maybe they could win it this year. Luka goes to the Lakers, suddenly you're like, ooh, a lot of teams in the West can compete. That premium, not just being great, not just be doing more with less, but when you have something, turning it into championships makes, to me, makes LeBron the most valuable to his team. Well, I definitely hear where you're coming from, and I'm, I'm glad that you came to the party, albeit a bit too late, when you're recognizing LeBron as the best in the world and his extreme value. But let's take into consideration the specificity of the question that we're addressing here, Max Kellerman. The fact of the matter is, when we talk about Luka, we ain't just talking about basketball. When we talk about LeBron and Luka, we ain't just talking about basketball. Luka's an international icon right now. Luka ain't from the United States of America. He is an international icon, which is why Mark Cuban just brought up his cachet with social media because the bottom line is when you look at the Dallas Mavericks this guy has got them on the map you realize how much money Luca is making for the Dallas Mavs franchise you probably I mean listen I don't care whether it's Luther, Lithuania Serbia uh, uh, Morocco I don't give a damn where it's from everybody across the world knows something or two about the Mavs jersey right now in the Mavs franchise all because of Luca. So let's take that into consideration, along with him being 21 years of age, along with him being white. Let's bring that up, too. The brother's got a lot of cachet, and I'm talking about overall value. I'm looking at him right now, and I'm saying, this kid right here is something special, and we can't ignore that. Well, I just looked up Luca while you were talking on Twitter. He has 1.1 million followers. LeBron has 48.5 million. <laughs> no, I don't think we want to play. That's right. That's true. <laughs> I don't think we want. We. I don't think we want to play the social media game with LeBron. He's a beast. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, we know. But I'll say this: I was just it's not a yeah. knock against Luca. Yeah. Luca at 21, 20. Like it's ridiculous the kind of stuff he's doing at his age. He's almost on pace with LeBron. But LeBron, by the way, when I said. Kawhi is the best. That's not the first time. I thought LeBron was no longer the best, and I was mistaken. It's happened three times. Steph Curry, when he won yes. the MVP and the team looked invincible, I thought LeBron's better, but in this NBA, Steph is better because he can shoot and from three. And then Giannis. I thought that with Giannis. And then Giannis. I thought that with Kawhi. And, and the then Kawhi. And, no doubt. And, I, and, yep. and the remarkable thing about LeBron is whenever it looks like there's a mm -hmm. contender to his throne and events conspire to make you think, well – He's had it. He's getting.